front of you. Um, I'll call fights on, and uh, then uh, you'll try to kill me. And hey guys, Spud here. And today we have a recording of a one-on-one -on -one training session with one of my patrons. In this video, we're going over the basics of BFM or basic fighter maneuvers in the F-16C Viper within the confines of DCS world. The biggest thing that I like to focus on with new DCS pilots is proper aircraft control and how to recognize the feedback the jet is giving you due to the fact that we can't actually feel the jet in the sim. One of the biggest things I like to impart on my students is not neglecting the rudder pedals. So many DCS players who fly the F-16 or F-A-18 neglect the rudders because of the fly-by-wire system of these aircraft. But once they see how utilizing their rudder pedals transforms their flying skills, specifically in the low speed, high alpha flight regime, you can really see that light bulb turn on. I am by no means the best BFM player in DCS, but I know how to teach people and bring them from zero to being a respectable opponent within visual range while also making sure they're having a great time and furthering their skills. It is one of my favorite things to see someone having a great time and improving at the same time. As always, I do one-on-one -on -one training with all of my patrons who donate $15 or more to help support the channel. This video was created using Thrustmaster flight sim peripherals, especially those rudder pedals that I like to emphasize. Check out a discount code pinned in the comments below for their entry-level HOTAS for those of you who would love to jump feet first into DCS with the right equipment. Of course, we also have to mention Fox 3 Managed Solutions. This training session was conducted on one of their servers, and man, they are the best, most hassle-free way to run a DCS world server. We have a 15% off code also pinned in the comments down below for Fox 3 Managed Solutions. So let's go ahead and get to it, guys. A turn reversal with just the rudder pedals. Okay. Also, you'll be able to snap the jet over almost like a snap roll very, very quickly if you're at that low speed, high angle of attack by full stick deflection and full rudder deflection. At the same time, you'll be able to whip the jet around very, very quickly. Um, that's basically all I've got before our first fight here. You ready to go? I guess just throw it in air to air mode and. Yeah, so it just uh, we'll just fly straight ahead here on current heading. We'll, uh, set up your jet however you want to be set up. Just uh, let me know when you're ready, and then we'll call fights on, okay? All right, sounds good. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Here, we're dogfight mode. Yep, pretty much. Go. And make sure you get your HMD turned on. And we should be good to go. All right, and three, two, one, fight song. Cool, good job, good job, good job. Still outside of me? Yep. Good, good, good. Inside the circle. Might be burning a little too much energy. That's okay, you're trying to stay with me. Yep. All right. Now you gotta do some of that pilot shit. <laughs> yeah. And I'm... Let's see. Altitude, altitude. Looks like it's going to be a rolling scissors down yep. to the deck. Yep, right in And maneuver there. kill. <laughs> cool. All right, so pretty darn good there. Um, just uh, when it comes to that gun work, um, what we want to do, and it also will help you, of course, stay on the bad guy's tail. So go ahead and respawn while I'm talking here. Um, All right. Is think of uh, 
there's a saying called uh, you want to match lift vectors when you're trying to take a gunshot. And that's going to give you the maximum amount of bullets on target when you take that gunshot as opposed to a very high deflection shot. And so what that means is think of if when you look out over your on your wings, your wings create lift, obviously, right? Even your fuselage yep. creates lift in a fighter jet. Yeah. Think of a big old arrow pointing straight out of the spine of your jet. Mm -hmm. You want to match that arrow to my arrow every time you're behind me on my six in a dogfight. So what that'll allow you to do, if you think about that, that arrow will only move if I roll the jet left or right. So if you see me rolling left, you want to roll left immediately. Keep that arrow matched up. Okay. And that will, the better and better and better you get with that, the more and more and more you'll be able to, to anticipate my moves before I even do them. And so that way you'll just stay with me, right on me the entire time. Okay. Um, always, it's all about matching orientation of the jet. Exactly, yeah. Okay. And so that way, if our if our orientation of the jet is completely the same, when you squeeze that trigger, your bullets are going to, more of your bullets are going to impact me than if I was flying across your nose. Does that make sense? Yep. Um, and the good thing is, you know, a Vulcan cannon has a very, very high fire rate, as you know. And so even with those deflection shots, you'll probably get enough hits to be able to critically damage me. But if you have a very good match on my lift vector, then you'll be able to say rip a wing off or something like that, mm -hmm. um, as well as just be able to stay behind me a lot easier. Um, have you heard of or um, looked at the idea of uh, pure lead and lag pursuit? I've kind of heard of it, but I'm definitely not that familiar with it. Okay. Very, very simple concept, um, but more difficult to apply in practice. So... Uh, a pure pursuit is when you're trying to get your gun sight right on top of me and actually squeeze that trigger, right? So that's that pure pursuit. I'm following him. I'm trying to squeeze that trigger right now. A lead pursuit would be where you're trying to essentially fly an intercept vector on me, but okay. in a dogfight, nice and close, where you're trying to close the gap by essentially cutting me off. Does that make sense? Yeah, pulling lead and cutting the circle. Exactly, right. Yeah. Lag pursuit is when you are letting your nose fall back behind me um, and letting me maneuver or get fast or get slow while not necessarily having your nose on me. But if you have me in a lag pursuit, you are retaining more energy because you're not pulling as hard, as well as if you just keep me somewhere, you know, up above your HUD here and, you know, about 30 degrees nose up above your waterline of your jet, you're, yeah. you're still behind me. You're just letting me do whatever I want to do. Corkscrew around the sky trying to shake you. But you're just like, hey, I'm just hanging out back here, just waiting, biding my time for a shot, preserving my energy. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. So kind of like working on when do I use that pure lead and lag pursuit is a really good uh, way to get better at dogfighting, along with matching lift vector, anticipating what the other guy's doing. You really want to think about dogfighting is I'm not just flying my jet. I'm flying the other guy's jet too. So that way you can really anticipate what's going to happen and make moves that are to your advantage, not disadvantage all the time. So Makes sense? When to, yeah. When to fly the, you know, well, when to fly the enemy's flight path and when to cut the circle and counter move, move, counter move type of situation. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I would say that I tend to fall more on the old kind of old school kind of camp when it comes to dogfighting. And I think it tends to work a little bit better personally. So I might not have all the fancy dancy jargon that like growling sign to winder uses, but mm. um, I think it, uh, it all works just the same at, in the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. Um, just, just words at the end of the day. Yep. Yeah. So um, again, let's go ahead and do that again. And uh, let's see if we can uh, keep you from getting shot down this time. So again, I'm going just set up your jet. Let me know when you're ready. And uh, then I will slide out in front of you and uh, we'll start the fight. Okay. All right. Three, two, one. Here we go. Ready when you are. Alrighty. Well, I'm just going to slide on out in front of you here. Okay. Ready? Yep. Okay, fight's on.
Way too hard. That's all good. I did too, so you might get me here. Alright, there we go. Now I'm on your six. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I did not manage my drop. Cool, we have a... I'm just going to go ahead and pause it there so I don't lose, forget this teaching moment that we've got going. So what I did there is uh, I basically flew like a one circle fight against you vertically. Mm -hmm. So when I got to the t apex of my loop, I actually cut the engine, went full idle, boards out, and pulled as hard as I could and just got an incredibly tight turn radius and was able to turn right back around on you in the vertical. So I was using you know, the act of gravity slowing me down while I'm pointing nose up to degrade my speed and allow me to turn as tight as possible. Then as soon as I got to the very apex of the loop, hit full burner, get some more airflow over the control surfaces and pull hard back into you in the vertical. So, and then, you know, at, at one point I made the mistake we, of I pulled too hard. You didn't pull hard enough. I stalled got the nose pointed down, and then I was still slow enough that you overshot me. Was able, Now I'm on your 6 o'clock. Yeah. So um, all of the things that people will talk about in a horizontal fight when you're you know, turning left and right also applies when you're in that vertical fight, when you're up and down. So okay. when you see somebody going up, especially in a fly-by-wire jet like an F-16 or an F-A-18, really anticipate for them to cut that power at the apex of the loop and really pull hard on you and get your nose on you. Because usually that guy is going to be so slow like I was there and you're going to be trying to retain energy because you're like, oh man, we're going up, we're going up, we're going up, we're going up, we're going up. I got to try and stay fast by modulating my stick pull to maintain energy. But in my opinion, if we're way the hell up there, we've got plenty, I've got plenty of... Uh, you know, energy in reserve because I'm way high, I can get that energy back. Might as well kill it now, get my nose on him, get him to overshoot because he retained too much energy. And now I'm on your six o'clock. So just be careful when going up into the vertical because there are times where you really got to preserve that energy and other times where you just got to dump it all. So it's just a matter of practice, practice, practice of what situation requires what. That's actually... That's actually my favorite way of reversing a fight where I start defensive or I'm on the defensive. That's my absolute number one favorite way of, of getting people to overshoot is actually in the vertical like that. Okay. Um, but anyway, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll unpause and we'll see if you can get out of it. Okay, three, two, one, here we go. Yeah. Got him. <laughs> yep. Okay. So that's another really good teaching moment there. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're up in that vertical, you got to be looking over your shoulder, looking at how close that guy is. A lot of folks will pull nice, perfect loop, awesome aerobatic loop. You're going to win a competition with it, aerobatic competition, but it's going to get you killed in a dogfight like this. Mm -hmm. You kind of want to do a fucked up loop when you go into the vertical if that makes any sense a yeah. fucked up dirty loop that's going to make every aerobatics competition judge go what the hell is he thinking because if we are do, you, making that perfect loop beautiful awesome blue angel loop um it's going to be very easy for matt for me to match my lip vector on you squeeze that trigger and i think every single bullet in that trigger squeeze hit your jet yeah. So you want to kind of, as you're going up that loop, you want to angle your bank angle. So that way you're going to be making more of a corkscrew shape in that loop rather than a perfect circle loop. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you had just kicked in, say, a little bit of rudder left or right or rolled the jet slightly left or right, it would have been much more difficult for me to get a gun solution on you at that close to the apex of the loop like we were there and be able to squeeze the trigger and have every single bullet hit you. So when it comes to evading somebody who's on your six and throwing off their aim, the more we can change our lift vector, left, right, up, down, whatever it is, the harder it's going to be for them to actually get to a point where they can squeeze that trigger and shoot you down. Okay. So 
when we're defensive, we want to be as wild and crazy as possible to be able to avoid getting shot. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I, I guess I underestimated how much energy you were going to, or how much speed you were going to have coming out of that loop with that last maneuver. Yep. Um, that's why I also got to be looking over that shoulder, looking at me. How close is he? How close is he? Oh, that's a little close. I better do something about it kind of situation, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and respawn. Okay. What's really awesome is you're doing a really, really good job of keeping sight of me. Most new DCS World pilots can't keep sight of their opponent, and that's a really big problem because you got to work with your track IR and your screen yeah. resolution and all that to just kind of get everything perfect for that, uh, for that. Yeah. I lost you going into that loop, but I, I started looking around and then, well, you know what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So one thing to, to be able to pick somebody up again, once you have lost them is think about, okay, I last saw him here and he was headed that direction Therefore, I better kind of look out in front of where that area is to, in order to pick them up again. So yeah. if I'm coming across your right shoulder and now you can't see me anymore because I'm behind kind of the canopy structure and your ejection seat, switch over to your left shoulder really quick and then be able to see me come out that direction. You know, things of that nature. Okay. Also, don't look for a jet when you are trying to look for a target. Look at the ground or look at a cloud. And then try to see movement moving across the ground or across that cloud or that piece of the ocean or that sky. And because if you look for an aircraft, you'll never find it. But if you look for movement, you'll find it every time. Yeah. Yep. Okay. You ready? Yep. All right. All right. Go ahead and get everything all set up. All right. Good to go. All right, I'm good to go now as well. I'll slide out in front again. Okay, and fight's on. Good shot. Oh, there's pieces of me flying off. That's not good. I got your wing. Yeah. <laughs> I still had some kind of control over it, so that was... Yeah, for a second. Now your key here is not flying yourself on the ground. <laughs> yep, just thought about that. Cool. Yeah, the, uh, the rudder, that tip with the rudder, because I started following you. I'm like, oh, man, he's pulling pretty hard, but I'm above him. Yeah. Taking a little bit of rudder, keep it inside the circle, start, you know, rolling a little bit into a circle mm -hmm. was really helpful. Yep, exactly. So you, the rudder, rudder is, it's all about rudder with these mm -hmm. fly, by or wi fly by wire jets. It's all about rudder and the other jets too, but it's uh, people tend to just neglect the rudders in, in the F-16 and F-18, whereas they really do make all the difference. So yeah. we'll, we'll go ahead and respawn here. That was a really good one. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, this is the exact type of training I was looking for. This is perfect. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to hear that. And again, I'm not trying to beat up on you um, with you know shooting you down twice in a row, but you've got me now once, so <laughs> you got to lose to learn. So for sure, and uh, it's my my job to also you know make sure that I lose once in a while too. Yeah. Uh, cool. Looks like you're spawned in. Mm -hmm. Um, and we'll go ahead and unpause. Again, we'll just get the jet set up, ready to go. All right, ready. Okay. All right, I'll slide out in front again. Okay, three, two, one, fight's off.
Well, trick, almost, tr almost tricked you on that one, huh? Yeah. Hit the brakes and it'll fly right by. Yeah, I saw it. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's see if you can shake me now. Do some of that pilot shit. Yep. Ooh, my Sidewinder really likes that sun. It does. It's a lot of task management all at once. Yep. Where's the ground? Yep. Where am I? What's your jet doing? What it's, what's your wingman doing? Am I gonna shoot a friendly, or am I gonna shoot a bad guy? Let's see if he hits the ground. He didn't, good job, good job. So right now, where we're both kind of locked in the circles, where I'm gonna go for more of a lag pursuit, build up some of that energy, so that way I can have something to work with when you are killing yourself down low on the ground here. Yep. So I'm starting to win the fight. I'm starting to get the angles on you because I'm actually building up some energy. But it looks like you're kind of getting some back as well, so that's yep. good. Good job. Hold up. Pulling less back on the stick. Do a little, use a little vertical. Oh, remember, you pulled less back on the stick. Good, but don't try to graze that nose too much because you'll just be kind of trading one energy bleed for another, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool, cool. You're doing a good job. So I'm going to say screw that, and I'm going to unload. And I'm going to run away Altitude. and reset Altitude. the fight. Uh, I, I wasn't maintaining visual. Yep, exactly. So yeah. now we got to transition back to using our radar in a BVR mode to try and see if you can pick me up. All right. So whenever you're in a situation in a dogfight, right, be Jack Sparrow. Run away. <laughs> <laughs> it works. So, exactly, right? Because now I can get away from you and maybe I can pick you up with my radar and shoot you in the face with an AMRAM, right? So yep. it's really important to be able to be flexible enough to switch back and forth between and then know, hey, this is not going well. I better just go ahead and get out of here and try this another way. Makes sense. There he is. It looks like we're going to come into a merge here. Do you see me? No, not yet. Okay. So another teachable moment here, that's why I'm uh, pausing, is in your aircraft, look at your raw scope. Do you see yep. a, a 16 on your raw scope? Yep, I got you at 11. Cool. So um, you can use your sensors in your jet to be able to figure out where the bad guy is and then use your raw equipment to then get your radar on him or your, get your eyeballs on him to be able to you know, use all that information that's coming into you. Your jet is trying its hardest to help you out. You just have to know where to look to get that information that you need. You can also, of course, use the raw symbol that's on your HMD to actually guide your eyes directly onto the azimuth of where that bad guy is coming from. So that can be very, very helpful as well. So uh, use all that information that's available to you. Just don't get too sucked into the cockpit and too sucked into the avionics because I'm only six miles away from you. We don't want to get to the point where we're looking two heads down in the cockpit at our sensors and not be looking outside when we could have just picked them up visually just by looking outside the cockpit. So um, use all your sensors, but don't use them too, too much, if that makes sense. Yep. It cool. Maintain situational awareness. Exactly. All right. Unpause in three, two, one. Altitude. Altitude. All right, there's the merge. Going for a one circle fight. I won that one. I didn't think I was yeah. going to. I lost in the sun. Yep. Alright, the 
decide, run away or change the lift vector and stay in the fight. Cool, good job, good job. Definitely threw off my aim there. Careful over the top there. They could have fucked up loop, not a perfect loop. <laughs> yep. Change that lift vector, use those rudders. Don't let me get a good beat on you with a gunshot. Ooh, that was close. Good job, good job. Nice job, nice job. Now you're making it hard on me. I like it. Nice, 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 nice. And the more unpredictable you are, the more chance you are of potentially getting me to overshoot here. Which is exactly what I did to you at the beginning of this fight. Ooh, wow, that was lucky. Yeah, I'm not moving around enough. No, you're moving around a lot. It's, uh... You are making it hard on me, that's for sure. Oh, that was a lucky shot. I think I, think I got your engine. Yeah, I think I'm still all right. I'm almost out of fuel, though. <laughs> all right, well, your fire suppression system seems to have worked because you're no longer on fire. Very nice, very nice. Cool, doing a really, really good job of making it hard. I like it. And there it goes. Reverse your turn, reverse your turn. I just overshot. Reverse your turn. There you go, there you go. All right, at this point, at this point, I'm like, okay, I fucked up, so I'm fast. I want to stay fast. I want to be fast. So yeah, now I'm running away. And I'm slow. Yep, exactly. So the better, you want to make sure you're keeping your eyes on me back there, because then you can now I'm know. Oh, okay, you're out of gas? All right. Yeah. I think I might have shot a fuel tank or something, because you were on fire for quite a while there. Yeah, um, that's probably what happened, because it went to bingo, did nothing very quickly. <laughs> Oh yeah, look at your F2 view. I shot you right in the center barrel. I'm surprised that your oh, jet yeah. didn't break up. Um, yeah, I pulled hard on it too. <laughs> yeah. Um, so on that, when you when you have your eyes on the guy back behind you, you, mm -hmm. you and you know when he's overshot, the quicker you can get that turn reversed and get your nose back on him, the, the less he, he's going to be able to run away from you. If you do overshoot somebody like you did at the, the beginning of this fight, it's because you're fast. And so the the basic dictum of dogfighting is if you're fast, be fast. If you're slow, be slow. So don't try to be like, oh, shit, I fucked up and try to slow down after you've overshot. Right. Because that's just going to allow him to stay with you and get a good shot off on you. But if you're like, oh, you know what? I fucked up. I overshot, but I'm fast. Let's be fast. Hit that burner. Push forward on that stick a little half G, nose down, build up as much speed as possible. Get into, say, a little BVR scenario again to come back around or pull up into that vertical, gain a whole bunch of altitude and then come back down on him. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. Cool. Awesome. I just awesome. realized this was a, a Phoenix bird. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. This, this might be a Nels bird. Um, Los Paqueros. I think that's the Arizona National Guard. Yeah, um, it's got the sun on it. Yeah, yeah. I was at DM that they they was mothing right next to it. Oh, okay, gotcha. I fly into there a lot, so I see these jets flying around all the time. Yeah, so all just international cool. F sixteen pilots go through there. Oh, really? Interesting. Um, did you see that uh, Taiwanese F sixteen A that broke its landing gear in Hawaii recently? No. no, it came down like he was a Navy fighter. Uh, I don't know. I think it, the gear just collapsed on him. The nose wheel just went out and they went skidding down the runway. Oof. Yeah. yeah. They're going to be going for maintenance. Yeah. Um, cool. I'm respawned for whenever yep. you are ready. I was admiring the bird. No problem. Right. So you did a really, really good job of keeping me from getting a good gun shot on you and when you are making those very rough uh, maneuvers like that you're incrementally bleeding off speed 
and when you make those hard, like quick rolling snapping maneuvers. Mm -hmm. And so the bad guy behind you might not realize that. And that's when they're going to overshoot. So you're kind of like bringing them in closer, 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 closer. He doesn't realize it. Boom. There's the overshoot. Take advantage of it by reversing your nose back onto it as quick as possible and then not letting him get away. Yeah. Um, yeah so uh, we'll, if, if you want to run one more, we can. And then uh, we can move on to uh, more advanced skills, if you'd like, um, okay. like BVR stuff. Yeah, uh, whatever you think. Sure, because you're doing really well with this. I think it's just a matter of practice. So I want to, you know, use our time together to the maximum effectiveness. Oh, yeah, I appreciate it. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and unpause in three, two, one. Here we go. Okay. Good. Accidentally turn my speed brakes on. Yep, don't do that. <laughs> yep. All right. Okay, you ready? Yep. Okay, three, <coughs> two, one. Here we go. There's puppy. <laughs> yeah, he probably wants some attention. That's okay. I'm focusing on rudders and not focusing on throttle. Yep. Be just careful of the ground there. Oh, yep. <laughs> I'm trying to, trying to find you again. Yep, yep. So uh, it's one thing to think about there is if when you're looking back behind your shoulder, right? Mm -hmm. um, use the what you can see of the horizon to, and then you know think about what your nose is doing in relation to what you can see of the horizon. So that way you don't accidentally like roll over and pull back and put your nose right into the ground like you just did. Yeah. So. Um, and that takes some skill too of like, can I fly close to the ground? Like doing aerobatics while looking over my shoulder? Well, once you get used to it, you can. Um, so you can think about, okay, I see a little bit of the horizon there. What, what does that mean for my nose? Oh, okay. My nose is up or my nose is down or whatever it might be. So just kind of, you know, as you're flying around and practicing against the AI or on growling sidewinder or whatever, just start thinking about that kind of stuff. So that way, you use less brain cells on your jet and you use more brain cells on the fight and situational awareness and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Then, you know, as you practice everything, all that becomes second nature. Yep, exactly. But also don't, uh, you're trying to look for a bad guy, you know, and, and you, you see your bad guy, he's at your three o'clock. He's going to come over your canopy, you know, move into the six o'clock. Okay. I know where he is, right? He's, he's going from three o'clock to my six o'clock. He, he's not, because his jet and he, you know, has to abide by the laws of physics, he, I know where he is and where he's going to be. So if I do need to take a quick peek back to my nose, back to my HUD, just to make sure everything's good to go, well, I know where he's going to be. So I can then snap my head right back to where he was and then pick him up again. Yep. That, that makes sense too? Yeah, it's a little bit of an art form. Yeah, exactly. Video. Yep, exactly. It uh, just takes practice, practice, practice. And that's why, you know, F-15 uh pilots in real life this is what they do all the time and that's why they're the best at it whereas you know f-16 pilots they have to also know how to drop j dams and laser guided bombs and do casts and all that kind of stuff so it just requires practice 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 and i'm by no means the best at it because i like to do other stuff in dcs too you know yeah so um cool let's go ahead and wrap up the bfm